Welcome back to my Excel for Scientists tutorial series. So we're getting towards the end of the series and we're going to mainly talk about statistics and exporting data from now on. So today we're going to be going through t-tests. So I'm going to show you how to do t-tests in Excel and which type of t-test you should be using. As always, if you want to follow along with this specific data to make sure you're getting the same answers I am getting, then you can download this Excel workbook off of um, the link in the description below, it has all of the Excel series and all of the data that goes along with each of these individual videos there. You can also either in that link or in a separate link in the description below, download my Excel cheat sheet. It's going to have the formulas I'm using, what I'm doing with them and how you can do it easily in a PDF so that you can easily print it out and have it next to you anytime you're trying to remember how to do these so you don't have to keep referencing these videos. All right, so let's get started today. So we're gonna talk about how to do t-tests and the main two types is paired and independent t-tests. So we're gonna go through a paired t-test first. I'm gonna explain a little bit about it and then we're gonna go into the independent. So here we have um, the, again, this is just a bunch of data that is talking about mental um, disorders prevalence within countries um, by year. So in this case, we have a bunch of different countries. We have the prevalence of um, mental disorders in 2000 and the, or the prevalence of depression in 2000 and the prevalence in 2010. So this is about a decade apart. And what we want to know is, was there a significant difference in the rates of depression in 2000 compared to 2010? And so something important here is whether we should use an independent or a paired t-test. So if we were just interested in all countries where the rates different, we could logically use both. Um, so a paired t-test in this case is going to give us a greater power. And it's specifically going to do this because there might be countries with just lower rates of depression or higher rates of depression. So if we just compared all of the all of the depression rates in 2000 versus all in 2010, there's going to be a lot more variability in that than if you have it specified per country because each country has its 2000 number and its 2010 number, which means those two numbers are more highly correlated to each other than they are to any other number because they come from the same country. They are linked together. And when something is linked together, then you're more likely to use a paired t-test as long as that's what you're actually asking. And so in this case, if we use a paired t-test, what we're asking is within each country, was there a significant difference in the 2010 versus 2000s depression rates? So this would not work if this was just a random set of 2000 and 2010 data and wasn't linked together by country. So I do wanna make that clear. So to answer this, we want to do equals t-test, and so this is t.test, and so this is going to give us a p-value. And so what we need is our arrays. So we're gonna have two arrays of data. So we, we want to test 2000s versus 2010s, and in this case, it doesn't matter which one the arrays go with. So we're gonna do the 2000s array first, and then the 2010 array second. Then the question is a one or two tail distribution. If you're not sure which you should use, you most likely want to use a two tail distribution. If you're using a one tail distribution, that means you have a lot of evidence that it can only be higher or lower. It could not be potentially either. So we don't know for sure that 2010 is definitely going to be higher or is definitely going to be lower than 2000s. We could assume that it most likely would be higher or our hypothesis is that, but that's not enough to validate a one test distribution. We should still use a two test distribution even if we think maybe it's higher in 2010 versus 2000. So we're gonna use a two tailed distribution and then we're going to put input one and this means that it's paired. So if I do that in equals, we see that we get a p-value of 3.9 times 10 to the negative 10. So this is obviously a significant value. 
So depression rates were different in 2010 within a country compared to 2000. What we don't know, though, is were they higher or lower? We can't know that. We just know that they were overall different. So what we are testing is, is the average difference between these two numbers different than zero? So it could be greater than zero or lower than zero, but we're just asking, is it different than zero? And this is telling us that yes, there is actually a difference happening between these countries from 2000 to 2010. So if you wanted to see if it increased or decreased, you would find the difference between all of these and then look at the average and see if that was a positive or a negative difference. But overall, all we know is that it did significantly change. So now let's do an independent t-test. So in this case, we have categories. So we have countries, and then these are grouped by whether they worked greater than, whether the average person worked more than 2,000 hours per year, or if they worked below 2,000 hours per year. So we want to know what is the average depression prevalence for countries below 2,000. So this is how we're going to figure out if we're higher or lower. So we're going to find the average of these numbers. So let's do the average. And I'm just going to do it like that. And then we're going to equal the average again. And we're going to come into where it says below 2000s. And I can do that only because I've already pre-sorted these. Um, and then we're going to do the significance of depression. So in this case, we want to do another t-test. But none of these values, so here are our 2,000 hours plus and our below. None of these are any more related to each other than any other value, right? There's no links between this 4.22 and this 3.29. So this time we need to run an independent t-test. So we're going to put in our two arrays. So we're going to do that, put in our second array. If you want to just go all the way down to the bottom, hit control shift down and it'll automatically do that for you. Our tails, again, we're going to do a two tail. We don't know if they're going to be higher or lower. And for our type, we don't want to run a, a paired and a lot of people will run two sample equal variants. And this is one that you should run really cautiously. So if you run a two sample unequal variance, if your variances are actually even slightly unequal, this is going to account for that. And you're going to have much, um, you're going to have a much more robust system. If you have equal variance, you're going to get the same answer basically as doing a two. So in my case, I always run a three. This is just going to give you a better um, estimate of that variance than just always assuming they're equal by running a two in that spot. So this is significance. So this we can tell it is significance. Did it increase or decrease? So we know that those that worked over 2000 hours actually had a higher. Oh, I did this wrong, guys. Yep, definitely did this wrong. So. Yeah, this is actually incorrect because I messed up, which is why what I'm going to show you next is even better because this is actually this greater than 2000 hours. And then this is actually less than messed that up. There you go. So now we have greater than less than. So people who worked more actually had a significantly lower rate of depression. That is very interesting. Um, but that's basically what this is showing, is that if we just divide it, and if you're wondering, 2,000 hours is working 40 hours a week for 50 weeks, because in America, you usually get two weeks of vacation time. So that's what that, that why I picked that 2,000 number. So this thing, it's significantly different. So now, just as before where I messed up which air, array went where, I want to show you what if your things aren't already pre-sorted. So we're going to do it slightly different. So this is for anxiety instead of depression. But what you can see is these aren't already sorted. So we could sort them. But then if we didn't sort them, 
um, or if something changed or something, all of these numbers would be off. So instead, we're going to use the logic. And if you want to see how I'm doing this um, part up here where I'm just summarizing, check out this video above all about how to summarize your data. So this is below. And I walk you through how to do a bunch of different things um, like this. So as you can see here, where I made the mistake before of which uh, column to pick, I, I'm not going to make that mistake here because I actually have to um, look at it, right? So I'm looking at 2000 plus instead of just assuming it's the top and the bottom. And this. So the only reason I'm going through this so fast is because I already have a whole video on how to do what I just did. So now what we want to see is, are these significantly different? So if we want to do this, we are still going to run the t-test as before, but now our things aren't nicely sorted over here. So I can't just scroll down and say, okay, these are the first array. So what we're going to do is we're going to use logic functions. We're going to use if functions. So we're going to say if this is equal to below 2000, then give this value. If it's not, give nothing. So that's what that's saying. It's going to look through here. And so for every below 2000, it's going to populate array one with this number. If it's like this one where it's not below 2000s, it's just going to give it nothing there. It's not going to give it a zero. It's going to give it nothing. That's an important difference between those two. So then the next thing is we want if this, sorry, is equal to 2000 plus hours. And you want to make sure whenever you're doing text that it is exact. The value of true is going to be, again, that anxiety prevalence. And the value of false is going to be nothing. So now our two arrays are logic functions. It's going to auto populate that array based off of what this actually says. So now we want to do the tails so that we're completing our formula just like we did before. So it's a two tail distribution and we're going to use that three again for the unequal variance. And so it might take a little bit longer after you press enter to populate. But now we can see that it's even more significant that those that have above 2000 work hours have a lower prevalence of anxiety. Now, this does not mean that working more decreases your anxiety, right? Like always causation versus correlation, very different things. Um, but this is really interesting data. And so we do want to be careful before you make any causation ideas about what this data actually means. And yes, this is actually real data from um, our world and data. So that's how you do a paired t-test, an independent t-test, and then an independent t-test using if logic so you don't have to sort your data or anything um, like that. Also, don't forget to grab that cheat sheet. It has all of these and how to fill out all those different t-test formulas in there. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video, which is all going to be about correlations and regressions and creating those models. I'll catch you in the next video.